Hi and welcome to the channel. A big welcome to all my regular viewers and a warm welcome to any new viewers coming to you from Shenzhen, China. Uh, today it's 19 degrees and overcast. It's pretty warm in here. So today I'm sporting a polo shirt, a nice sort of um, blue polo shirt. Well, I like it anyway. Um, before I, I go on, I'd just like to mention that tomorrow we do have our live stream. That's um, our channel with three other channels, Daniel Dombrill, Guelo60 and Reportify Media. I'll put some details on the screen about that. I'd also like to give a plug to a video my son made yesterday. I'll put a card here that you can click on if you want to watch that. And it was a video about his um, time in China. He's been here a year now and it's about his time. And I really think it's a, a, a nice video. Um, so you may be interested in watching that. So without further ado, let's get to the numbers. So first of all, the numbers within China. There are 80,565 confirmed cases, 3,015 people that have died and 52,123 people who have recovered. That leaves a total active, which is um, confirmed less died and recovered of 25,427 of those there are 5,737 who are still in a severe condition. Still, most of the confirmed cases are in Hubei province. As of yesterday, there were 134 new confirmed cases in Hubei and just a handful, I think less than 10 outside of Hubei. Shenzhen again had no new cases and currently Shenzhen has only 74 ongoing cases which is is really good um, as you will see from other videos we've done and especially the video my son done yesterday Shenzhen is is really getting back to normal many more people about um, so yeah that's really good on to global figures there are 17,277 confirmed cases 339 deaths one thousand four hundred and sixteen people who have recovered which gives a total active cases of fifteen thousand five hundred and twenty two so south korea and iran are still continuing to see um, increasing cases um, south korea have now reported over six thousand with iran over three thousand five hundred Italy saw a huge increase in cases of 769 yesterday, also taking their total over 3,800. And it seems many other European countries are seeing quite significant increases. Apart from Italy, Germany, France and Spain with 149, 138 and 83 new cases cases respectively. Britain also added another 29 to its total yesterday too. And cases in the USA now up to 161 confirmed. Obviously those numbers were correct at the time um, I did this video which was around 1 p.m. China time. Um, so when you watch this video the numbers might be a bit different because it's a constantly moving thing and numbers are getting reported from all over the world all the time. So just do bear that in mind. Okay so first thing I'd like to sort of talk about today and again it's strictly my opinion but I think many of the countries outside China are seem to be more reactive rather than proactive um, and I find this kind of strange because they have seen what's happened in China and I think one of the, the, the main characteristics of, of this virus is how easily it spreads and here in China one of the things or the, the, the things they did to, to stop it is, is social gathering you know, getting everybody to sort of quarantine in their homes. They shut down um, cities and they made it very difficult in, in a lot of areas to, to sort of move around. And I see that's something that's not happening in, in many countries. I've seen quite a huge spike over the last couple of days in Europe. And I feel, 
you know that they should be being a bit more proactive in in closing things down i saw some reports in italy that that young people even in the the zones that they've kind of quarantined that young people are still getting together families are still getting together for, for large meals and i find that kind of strange i really think these european countries and and the usa too and well every other country outside of china should really look at, at what they did in china and what they've done in in korea where they've shut down social gatherings it, it seems to me that they they should be doing this now before it starts spreading even more but it seems they wait until it's spreading a lot before doing it and i think by that time it's probably then too late so I want to tell you a little bit more about the situation here in China. Um, I know a lot about my, my own area, Longgang in Shenzhen. So this morning I went to the local pharmacy to, to buy my two masks because we're allowed to buy two each day. Those are at a sensible price. So it's around 15 yuan for, for two N95 masks. That's about sort of £1.70. So they're, they're about sort of... Um, 85 pence each which is not super cheap but it's also not super expensive the authorities here are somewhat controlling the price and you as i say you can only buy two per day but when i went out to the pharmacy this morning uh, it was a lot more lively outside than it has been um, in the last sort of few days and if you take a look at my my son's video which i mentioned at the beginning you also see there it, it's a lot more livelier and many viewers will say that, oh, China are lying about the numbers. They're just saying the numbers are low and that people are not getting the virus just so they can get back people back to work. I actually don't buy that. And, and the reason I don't buy that is I think that, you know, the, the Chinese authorities, there's a lot of scientists, there's a lot of smart people within those authorities. They're also advised by some of the smartest people in the world on epidemic control. And I think it will be very short sighted for them to get people back to work, mixing with people who had the virus and sit, because I think the longer term implications of that would be far worse. You know, I, I very much see China as a country that, that will look at a more long-term approach. They won't look at the short term. Yes, it's doing a lot of damage to their economy right now. But I think if they really do get this under control, which they certainly seem to be doing outside of um, Hubei province, I think that will pay big dividends in, in the future. I think if they try to rush it and got people back to work too soon, the virus would take hold again and they will be back to square one. I really don't think they're that stupid to actually take that risk. I may be wrong and I may be proved wrong, but I don't see that the case right at the moment. I still see that there are a lot of controls in place, although those controls are becoming looser, there still are controls there in place. People, the Chinese people are also very aware of, of social gatherings. Restaurants are still pretty empty. I don't see the gatherings um, after work that that were previously there you know none of the square dancing has come back you know and the shopping centers are still pretty quiet i also have a very good friend um, who's currently in a city called huanggang in hubei province she has been talking to me throughout the the outbreak huanggang is a city or a near very near to wuhan uh, she's in a small town there and i was talking to her today on wechat and she says, you know, conditions have been very, very strict in, in that area. People were not allowed to leave their homes and they were using dedicated volunteers and authorities to bring food to them uh, into their homes. But she says in the last few days, the restrictions have been loosened somewhat. She's now able to leave her home and walk around her town, although they're not allowed to leave the town and the authorities there have now given permission that farmers in the area can start preparing their fields to sow the crops this is one area where the chinese authorities have been a little bit worried they were worried that if if farmers weren't allowed to sow their crops it, it would cause a a huge issue with food supply later down the line causing prices to to rocket 
because there's been a shortage of, of vegetables. But she told me today that the, the authorities have now allowed the farmers to plough and also that she's been allowed to, to leave, uh, leave her home and, and walk around the, the town. So just for a bit of background, she normally works in Shenzhen, but she went back to her hometown for Chinese New Year. And as of yet, she hasn't been able to get back to Shenzhen. She also mentioned one of the issues in the early stages was that the older people were not taking the the virus seriously enough and thought it was still okay to meet with their friends and go to social events and talking to some other young people this has been a sort of trait of the older generation here in china i think it was understood a little bit more by the uh younger generation here and, and somewhat the older generation were were not to and, and i can relate to that i sort of spoke to my parents in the uk and they're in their 80s and and i just get the feeling from them they they have not taken it as serious as they should you know i i sort of suggested to them that they they shouldn't go out they should stay in and they should be very careful if they do have to go out maybe not go to places where it's crowded and that but i'm not 100 percent sure how much they took that on board okay so now to other news so the first thing again we go back to this uh, cruise ships issue there is another cruise ship being held off the coast of california i believe somewhere near san francisco called the grand princess it has about 3500 passengers on board and there's approximately a hundred people who have started showing symptoms of coronavirus on board that ship. The US Coast Guard has apparently now got the coronavirus testing kit to them. So I believe they will be testing everyone on that ship. Personally, I'm a bit surprised that at this time people are choosing to continue to go on cruise ships. I think I've mentioned this before. In my opinion, they're a bit like Petri dishes and you wouldn't catch me going anywhere within half a mile of one at this stage. Uh, after the US said there would be no issue with the availability of testing kits a couple of days ago, Mike Pence has now said that the there will possibly be a problem they don't envisage to have enough testing kits for the demand and maybe this is one of the reasons why the numbers in the usa are still showing kind of quite on the low side is probably because they just are not testing enough people good news from the us is that um, it's now been announced that people on medicare and medicaid won't have to pay for the tests and i think they are the authorities are working with a number of private healthcare providers to to try and make sure that tests are done also free on people who are part of their care plans or systems so scientists in china have, have identified that there are two different strains of the coronavirus and one that is more aggressive than the other and they're suggesting that in the in the early part of the outbreak of the virus more people had the more aggressive strain uh, within the wuhan area um, but now that they are seeing more patients with a less aggressive strain so it has mutated to somewhat but it seems to have mutated into a sort of less aggressive form which again is great news so the government in the uk have gone into phase two of their plan is uh, which is to slow down the spread of the virus the chief medical officer chris witty has suggested that they're past the stage now where they can stop it altogether so it's now about slowing down the spread and they have announced that they may start shutting down schools and, and public events although i don't think they have actually done that yet only schools where there's been um a case identified that they have done that but it seems they will be moving to that strategy in the next few days again i think it's a little bit too reactive uh, more than being i think they should be a bit more proactive there the uk governments are also considering implementing some price controls and possibly prosecuting people who are trying to profit from the coronavirus unlike a couple of california youtubers suggested that this is only a thing that happens in in china where people uh, price gouge 
as you can see now it's happening all over the world there were some reports where people are trying to charge $50 in the USA for small bottles of hand sanitizer and sadly this is something that happens everywhere because it's a it's a supply and demand issue if if the demand is high and the supply is low there will always be people everywhere that try to sort of make profit out of that it appears that there are quite a high amount of deaths in Italy and maybe one of the reasons for that is that the areas where it's it's first hit I believe there are a lot of old people in those areas and as we know from evidence and patients within China that it is more hard hitting to older people especially if those older people have underlying uh, medical conditions and also great news is that it's not seen to be affecting children anywhere near as much as older people which is, is a good thing and that also carries forward to that we've seen the first death in the UK um, the authorities also said there it was an elderly person with underlying medical conditions. Thailand have now also implemented compulsory quarantine for people from South Korea, China, Macau, Hong Kong, Italy and Iran. So bear that in mind if you are traveling to Thailand and you have visited any of those countries within the last short period of time. The Netherlands are trying to work out how they're going to deal with 900 students who will be returning from a holiday in Italy. The students who are all in their 20s will be returning to the Netherlands and people in the Netherlands are fearful that it will cause a wider outbreak in the Netherlands. So far the Netherlands have reported 38 cases. A number of my viewers have commented that I don't talk much about Australia and one of the reasons that is is I find it difficult to find any news about what's going on in Australia. A number of my viewers have commented that I don't talk much about Australia during this coronavirus outbreak and that's because I struggle to find any news about what's going on in Australia. Currently Australia have 60 confirmed cases. It will be really useful if any any Australians out there can point me to some place where I can find some reliable news about what's going on in Australia with regard to the virus outbreak. So finally I have quite a funny story to tell you about here in China. So a number of weeks ago um, it was suggested here in China that the, the virus could be spread through paper money. So the authorities here instructed all the banks that they must disinfect the notes and hold them for a 14 day quarantine when they receive them into the, the bank. Uh, this is done either by some kind of washing or um, a UV treatment. But one woman here in China decided she thought it might be a good idea to, to use her own method of uh, disinfecting the notes. So she decided to put them in the microwave and ended up burning all of her money. That brings me to the end of a, another update. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for tuning in. It's really appreciated. Um, as usual, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you feel like you want to support us, the links are down below and I'll put the graphics on the screen for a few seconds now. If you like the channel, consider subscribing. And if you really want to keep up with what we're doing here, hit those bells. Anyway, as always, for now, take care. Mm -hmm.